is January 2023, and here in New York City, it is gray and cloudy, which is probably the situation for the next four to five months. So I thought that I would take today to talk you through the settings that I use for street photography here in New York City on cloudy and rainy days. I'm going to be talking about it primarily with the Leica M10R, but I'll also talk a little bit about the Leica M6, although all of the tips that I'm giving can also be used on you know, Canon, Sony, Nikon, whatever the case is going to be. So with that, let's jump right in. <music> If you like the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're coming back, awesome to see you again. Thanks for watching. And with that, let's jump right in. Okay, now before we jump in, I wanna talk basics. Let's make sure that we're on the same playing field when we're talking about exposure. So there are three pieces of exposure. It's referred to as the exposure triangle. Now when I say exposure triangle, this is what I mean. There are three pieces of the exposure triangle. The first is ISO, the second is aperture, and the third is shutter speed. These three pieces make up the exposure triangle. All three of these pieces work together, and it's important to at least have a basic understanding of each of the three of these things. The chapters in this video are going to specifically talk about each of these three components and how I use them for cloudy or rainy day street photography. Stay tuned at the end because I will put some bonuses in there for priority modes like aperture priority that can help shortcut some of this work. But for the purposes of using a Leica M, a lot of us like to shoot manual and it's not really that hard. You just have to understand the very, very simple basics of the exposure triangle. So let's start with that. ISO is a measure of the camera's sensors sensitivity to light or the film's sensitivity to light. On film, this is also referred to as ASA, or the box speed of the film. And you'll typically see this in a number like 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, or 3200. On modern digital cameras, sometimes there are other values available between those, but those are classically the traditional measures of ISO. It's important to understand what ISO does and also to understand your tolerance for ISO because the higher the ISO number on a digital camera, the more noise is introduced into an image. Aperture indicates how much light can come into the camera via the size of the opening or literally the aperture of the lens. Now you can see here that I'm upside down but also that the um, opening in the lens is really wide. If I were to stop down the aperture, you can see that the hole or the space for the light to come into the camera is smaller. So this is what aperture refers to. The smaller the hole, the larger the number, which is counterintuitive, but that's just the way it is. The larger the aperture, the smaller the number. So this lens is a, 1.4, so at 1.4, it's all the way open. So when we refer to the aperture being open, we refer to it being at its uh, lowest number available. When I stop this all the way down to, uh, I think this is F16, um, yes, F16, you can see that the, the hole or the size of the aperture that the light can enter the camera to either hit the film or the digital sensor is small. And shutter speed is literally how fast the shutter of the camera will open and close to let light into the camera to hit either the film or the digital sensor. So this is typically shown as a fraction of a second, so something like one one thousandth of a second is one over one thousand. Now, to get a perfect exposure, you need to balance all three of these pieces. And I'm not gonna go into all of the details of that, but it is just important to understand that the way that these pieces work together is to give your camera's film or sensor the right amount of light to come in to create a balanced exposure. Now you can manipulate this for stylistic purposes, but, but for today, really the point is just to say, all three of these pieces work together, and if you adjust one, the others need to be compensated for as well. And I promise this won't be as complicated as it sounds once we get 
get in. So let's jump into each of these sections to talk about how I set them for rainy or cloudy street photography here in New York City, specifically using my Leica M cameras. So let's talk about ISO first. ISO, again, is the sensitivity of your camera sensor or the film that you're shooting on to light. So the higher the ISO number, the more sensitive the film or sensor is to light. So on a cloudy or rainy day, typically I would be shooting somewhere between ISO 400 and ISO 1600. And it does depend a little bit just on personal taste and you know a little bit to the lighting conditions. But let me show you two examples of an image shot at ISO 400 and an image shot at ISO 1600. So you can see the difference in the overall exposure and similar sort of lighting conditions. Now this first image here was made a couple of weeks ago and I actually made a video about um, this particular day and showed some of those other photos and we'll come back to some of those later in the video I think but this photo was made at ISO 400 now if we look at the unedited image you can see that this is pretty underexposed I would have done well to actually try to expose this a little bit better but because of the really great dynamic range on the Leica M10R that I made this with I was able to apply one of my sort of go-to black and white presets and make a pretty strong image out of this. Now the reason that I show this at uh, ISO 400 is if I compare this to this next image which was shot at ISO 1600 um, you can see that there's a major difference in the amount of light that is coming towards the camera. And both of these images were actually shot with the same shutter speed. They were both shot 1 1 25th of a second. And you can see here that the image right out of the camera is significantly better exposed. There's a better sense of balance to the highlights versus the darks. And yes, it was a slightly brighter day um, when I made this photo versus the previous photo, but, but just as a point of comparison, the amount of light that is coming into the camera with ISO 400 versus ISO 1600 is pretty different. So I typically shoot most of my street photos at ISO 1600 because it allows me to make a faster shutter speed if I need to, but it also just gives me more room within the edit to find shadows and highlight details as needed. All right, so let's talk aperture. Now again, aperture is really about how open or closed the lens is and therefore how much light is able to come in every time that shutter opens to hit your sensor. Now. Aperture can be a really stylistic choice for portrait work. A lot of people shoot really wide open at you know f1.4, f1.8, f2, because what it does is it creates a really sort of creamy background and it blurs out anything in the foreground. So you get a sort of dreamy, focused image where the only thing that's in focus is the person's face. In street photography, especially here in a place like New York City, where there's a lot going on, the streets are really crowded, there's tall buildings, there's, there's just a lot of, potential chaos in an image, you actually want to stop down your aperture so that more of the image is in focus and you're more likely to capture your subject in a way that is in focus. There is a saying in journalism and street photography or candid photography, and that saying is F8 and be there. What this means is if you put your aperture at F8, which is what I'm always trying to shoot at when I am out in New York City or traveling and making street photos, is that if I keep my camera's aperture at F8, what it means is that anywhere from about five feet away from me to 25 feet or so is going to be pretty much in focus. Now sure, some of it's not going to be tack, tack, tack sharp, but I don't actually care about that. I care more about the emotional impact of the image and creating that sense of atmosphere and mood and vibe in whatever these street photographs are, whether it's in you know, New York City or somewhere else, rather than caring specifically about the technical perfection of the photograph. It's really hard to be a super super technically perfect photographer as a street photographer, particularly in a very fast moving place like New York, because things are constantly changing. So if you can put your lens and its aperture at F8 or even close it down more, the more of the image is going to be in focus. The, the greater the depth of field you're going to get if you stop that aperture down. And that setting F8 and be there really means set your camera 
and forget about it and just be ready for the moment. And that is really the crux of street photography, whether you're using a Leica M or anything else. The whole point is to be ready for that moment. F8 and be there is a mantra that I personally use as much as possible because it allows me to not think about the technical settings of my camera and just shoot. So let's look at two examples of a more wide open aperture versus a more closed down aperture and the difference in the image that they might give you. So this first image was also made a couple of weeks ago from that same rainy day uh, street photography video that I shot here in New York City. Um, this was made with my Leica M10R and this image was shot at f4. Now what you can see is that the woman's face approaching us, the older woman with the lighter colored umbrella, is pretty much sharp. I was focusing for her and about that distance. So that is the subject, that is what is pretty much in focus here. You can see that the street sign up there, one way, is also in focus because they're at about the same distance from the camera lens as each other. Now contrast that with the woman who is a little bit closer to the camera, who's walking away, also with that light umbrella, but who has that fur lining on the hood of her jacket. If we zoom in, you can see that there is blur or that she is out of focus. Now, if I had shot this at f8 or f16, that fur would be much, much sharper. It is likely that this whole image would feel pretty much in focus. So you can stylistically use a wider aperture to you know, create blur in the foreground or the background and isolate your subjects, but if you are looking to be able to really just be ready to go, particularly if you are a beginner and just really kind of getting you know, the hang of your street photography, uh, I would recommend you know, starting at f8 and really focus on how to get the right type of emotion in your image, and then you can start playing with some of the technical elements like you know, opening the aperture and working on focus and you know, creating a little bit more of a mood. Now let's compare that photo to another photo that I made on sort of a, a dark situation. It was kind of a cloudy day, although you will see there's sun in this image, but the amount of light was very similar to the amount of light that you have available on a cloudy or sort of rainy day. So this image was shot at ISO 800, but the aperture was set at f8. And the reason that I'm showing this image um, is that if we were to zoom into different areas of this photo, you can see that almost the entire thing is pretty much in focus. So with f8, what this allows you to do is to really capture most of a scene in a way that is rendered in focus, and you can just think about composition rather than worrying about the technical setting of your camera. Now the third piece of the exposure triangle is the shutter speed, or literally how fast the shutter of the camera opens and closes, and therefore how much light is able to come through that aperture and hit the sensor of the camera or hit the film. Now, shutter speed is important, but it is also stylistic. It's important because the faster your shutter, the sharper the image, or I should say, the faster the shutter, the less motion blur is incorporated into your image. So if you have a shutter speed of 125th of a second or 250th of a second, you are not going to get any motion blur of people moving if you are standing still. Now, if you are a street photographer and you are walking down the street, something like 1 25th of a second can still create motion blur because both you and your subject are in motion. But if you were standing still and watching people sort of come through your frame, 125th of a second, 250th of a second, or even more than that is going to essentially freeze motion in place. So you're not going to get very much movement in an image as opposed to if you were to shoot at 1 60th of a second or 1 15th of a second, you're going to get a lot more sense of movement within the image. Now the challenge with shutter speed is that the lower the shutter speed or the slower it is, the more likely you are to shake your camera when you literally push the shutter or the shutter itself could even shake the camera. So typically if you're shooting you know, a really slow shutter speed, you would want a tripod or to be resting it upon something I know for me with my Leica M's that I can shoot about 1 60th of a second and it's still pretty much sharp um, and I'm comfortable with that. Now there is 
sort of a rule of thumb that many people think about, and that is that your shutter speed should be twice your focal length. So if you're shooting on a 50 millimeter lens, you should be shooting at at least one one hundredth of a second. I don't know the physics and the math behind that, but it does tend to work pretty well. So if you're shooting at a 35 millimeter lens, you need to have a shutter speed of 1 70th of a second or greater, etc. So it is a good rule of thumb to be thinking about. And once you get sort of comfortable with where sort of that lower limit is for you, you can start to play with, um, you know, going below that if you need to. Now you can use slower shutter speed for artistic effects. So I was out yesterday actually, and again, it's sort of this, you know, cloudy, gloomy day. And I walked by the ice rink in Central Park. And what I decided to do was set a slightly longer or slower shutter speed so that I could blur some of the people on the ring can create a bit of an effect. So let's talk a little bit about how you adjust things like ISO, aperture, and shutter speed on the Leica M series cameras. So let's start with ISO. On the Leica M10R, um, this is adjusted here with this little pop-up, pop-out um, sort of tab. Now it's a little fiddly, but basically what happens is it, it pops up and you turn it based on the shutter speed that you're looking to use. Your shutter speed is also controlled with a dial on the top. Now you can see this dial here, and let's see if that'll focus, yes. And you just turn it based on what you want. Now we'll come back to the automatic mode in a minute, but you can see here the different values. And then aperture is controlled with this ring here. So the value that that little dot is showing is the value of the aperture. Aperture and ISO and shutter also apply on any other digital camera. They may change in different places and for a non mechanical manual camera like the Leica M series are. So if you're using, for example, the Canon R5, which is what I'm filming this on, but that I've used for a lot of my different travel photography around the way, um, some of this is going to be set more digitally. So there will be sort of digital menus that you can choose what the ISO values are, the shutter values are, etc. Now, the other thing I, I will note is that if you're using something like the Leica M, um, the shutter speed is still set up top just like it is on the Leica M10R. So the shutter speed maximum on the Leica M6 goes up to 1 1,000th of a second. On the Leica M10R, that's 1 4,000th of a second. So the, the digital camera, the M10R, is much faster. Um, so in really bright conditions, that's helpful. But for a cloudy or rainy day, a thousand is probably more than you're ever going to need. Now, the aperture would be set the same way using the lens that I just showed you. The only difference is that on the Leica M6, the ISO or the ASA is set with this dial on the back. So you set it based on the speed of the film or what you're trying to expose. You sort of push this thing in and then turn it. Um, and then it's based on the roll of film that you're using. So for example, if you're shooting with something like HP5, which is set at ISO 400, you would set the value on the back of the camera to 400, which is what it's set at right now. Now, everything that I've talked about so far is relevant to both manual shooting modes. So I could set for every shot, whether I'm talking, you know, Leica M10R, Leica M6, Canon R5, anything, any camera, you can set all three components of the exposure triangle manually. That's what we refer to as shooting in manual. And maybe I'll do a video specifically on how to be thinking about manual modes, but you could set the ISO to 1600 and the shutter speed at 125th and the aperture to F8. And assuming you've got the right amount of light and the conditions, you could leave the camera on that and go. Now, typically for something like portrait photography, you do everything in manual mode. Um, anywhere where there's a really controlled setting, you shoot in manual. Now, if you're shooting on a film camera or other fully mechanical, fully manual cameras where there's no priority modes or automatic modes, you have to work manually. You have no choice and you need to be thinking about using a light meter or understanding, you know, with practice and intuition sort of what the settings are looking like. But as a bonus in this video, I wanted to talk briefly about the three priority modes that are available in many cameras and when you might think about using them. 
Now there are probably gonna be a lot of haters in the comments who show up and say you should only shoot manual and to them I say go watch somebody else's video because I'm here to make videos about how to achieve whatever the effect is that you are looking for in camera but also to make your life as easy as possible or reduce friction as a photographer so you can get the shot that you're trying to create. So I often use what's called aperture priority mode. I do this because Aperture is a stylistic choice for me, as I mentioned. If I'm trying to always shoot an F8 or be there, but I know that the lighting conditions of the day are maybe going to be changing, maybe it's a day where the clouds are really moving a lot, but there's clear sky balanced with cloudy sky. If that is the case, I'm going to use something like aperture priority because what it does is it allows the camera to balance the ISO and or the shutter based on the aperture that I am choosing. Now on the Leica M10R, when I'm shooting in aperture priority mode, that typically means that I have set the ISO and it's fixed. So it's set at 400, 800 or 1600 and I've chosen the aperture that I want to be shooting at. So is it, you know, eight? Is it 16? Is it two? Whatever the case is going to be, I'm setting that aperture and telling the camera, I give control of you, camera, Leica, to choose the shutter speed. Now, the way to do that on the Leica M10R is, and you know, the Leica M11 and some of the others, is you put your shutter to this little A. That stands for automatic. On digital cameras, the aperture priority mode on Canons, for example, is on your sort of you know menu on the top. The mode is called AV. That is your aperture priority mode. Now I always, in almost every situation, set my ISO at a value. I very rarely use any automatic ISO. We'll come back to that in a moment. But for the purposes of aperture priority, think about it as giving you control over your aperture and saying, I want F8 and be there. I want this amount of the frame in focus, and I'm gonna worry about where that frame may live via focusing, but I'm gonna give control of the camera to let the camera say, is this 1 25th of a second? Is this 1 250th of a second? Is it 1 90th of a second? Let the camera do the thinking for you. This allows me to be fast in a lot of cases. Now, I do mostly use all manual settings, particularly on my Leica M series cameras, but there are times when aperture priority can really be helpful. For beginners in particular, aperture priority can be a really great way to learn your style and to start to learn some of the technicality of the camera. You can set your aperture, whether it's a Leica M series camera or a Canon or a Sony or a Nikon or anything, if it's got aperture priority mode, you can play with the different types of apertures and find out what works best for you. As I mentioned, F8 works best for me. There are lots of people who Go out and shoot wide open on the streets. I don't personally recommend it, but you can do whatever you want. Using aperture priority allows you to decide stylistically how much bokeh you want in the image, how much depth of field you want to be in focus, and let the camera do the rest of the thinking for you. Now the second priority mode that I want to talk about here, and I'm talking about this one second because it's the other one that's available on Leica M series cameras, is automatic ISO, or you could even think about it like an ISO priority mode. And what this does is says you want to allow the camera to automatically decide which ISO it's going to use. So on a Leica M series camera where you're choosing the aperture value and the shutter speed, if you put the camera in automatic ISO and suddenly there's less light available, the camera is going to automatically increase the ISO for you. So maybe you were shooting at around ISO 400 and suddenly it gets really dark, but you haven't changed the aperture or the shutter speed. The camera will automatically boost your ISO up to, let's say, ISO 800 or ISO 1600 or maybe ISO 3200. So it can be helpful. I would say if you are going to use this, you need to do a little bit of testing at home. And the way that you can test this and the reason that you want to test. Now, if you're going to use automatic ISO on any camera, like M series or otherwise, you need to do a little bit of testing at home. The higher the ISO on a digital camera, the more noise is introduced to the image. So you need to do a little bit of testing to figure out the tolerance that you are comfortable with based on the camera that you are using. This totally varies depending on cameras. Newer cameras are better at working with higher ISOs. 
I'm totally comfortable on the Leica M10R and on my Canon R5 to shoot at ISO 3200, even ISO 6400 in certain types of situations, whereas some of the older cameras that I had or the less sophisticated cameras that I had, I would never have thought about that because the images would have been so noisy. Now the way to figure this out is to just find a white wall and a dark wall and take a couple of images using a consistent aperture and shutter speed. So, you know, set it at f16, f8, whatever the case is gonna be, focus on a point on the wall, set your shutter speed to something that you know is going to be sharp. So 125th, for example, 120, um, 250th, and then shoot just a series of images. Start at ISO 100 and go up based on whatever sort of the increments available on the dial are for you or whatever sort of your your camera settings sort of recommend now traditionally or classically we would refer to this in stops so think about going up by a stop every time so shoot your first image on both the white and the dark wall at 100 then iso 200 then iso 400 then 800 1600 3200 6400 now you can keep going past 6400 but most cameras the quality of the image really degrades after that point because there's a lot of noise introduced into it. Now, yes, you can correct for noise in programs like you know, Lightroom, for example, but it's just good to do sort of a tolerance test for your personal taste level with your gear to understand what the highest level is for you. Now, with this camera, my Leica M10R, for example, I'm really comfortable shooting at ISO 3200 in any situation. However, during the daytime, when I know that there's a pretty reasonable amount of light, even if it's overcast or raining, I very rarely go above ISO 1600. And on the M10R and the M11 and other you know, digital Leicas, typically you're going to adjust this by, again, popping this little tab out and turning the ISO dial to A. On a digital camera like the Canon R5 or some of the other Canon digitals or Sony or whatever, this would be referred to as automatic ISO. So it's up to you if you wanna use this. I very, very rarely use it, um, but it is a tool that is available for you to use if you wanna try it out. Now the last of the priority modes is shutter priority. And I'm putting this last because it's not available on either of my Leicas. Now it is available on the Canon R5 that I'm filming this with. So again, because I've traveled a lot with my Canon R5, I know that sometimes shutter priority is really helpful. I typically use shutter priority at night or in really dark scenes. Shutter priority does the same thing as aperture priority or ISO priority in that it allows you to set the value of the shutter and then the camera will adjust everything else for you. But for most digital cameras, if you have shutter priority set, let's say you're saying, well, I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, so I don't want my shutter to go below one one hundredth of a second. You set your shutter to one one hundredth of a second and the camera will do the rest for you. This can be really helpful at night if you're trying to minimize camera shake um, based on the speed of the shutter. But again, it's not available, at least on the Leica M series cameras that I have. So so I included it here because it is something that a lot of people may use in their street photography, uh, but it's not something that I typically use on any of my Leicas these days. All right, so that's it. Typically for me, I'm shooting at f8 on my aperture, a shutter speed of 125th or 150th of a second, and then my ISO somewhere between 400 and 1600, depending on kind of how bright the day is. I would say if you're new, Try and use one of the priority modes, particularly aperture priority, and set your ISO level so that the shutter is the thing that changes and see what kind of images you can get. But again, these are all tools that you can use to create the types of images that you want to create. So I'll end with a couple more street photos that I've made recently here on cloudy and rainy days in New York City. Um, these were made again with my Leica M. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a like, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.